from wolves, hyenas, and monkeys to the badgers, the birds, and the bees. Here are 15 of the craziest animal relationships. Number 15, leaf hoppers and meat ants. If you live in Australia, you're probably familiar with meat ants. They are some of the most widely distributed insects throughout Oz. Viewed as vicious, territorial animals, they strip the meat from the carcasses of vertebrates. Other ants find them so intimidating that they'll keep clear and forage at night. But these ants are known to make certain exceptions for creatures that secrete substances upon which they can feed. Enter the leafhopper, an insect that secretes a sugary resin it uses for breaking down plants. The ants use the resin to preserve their food, and it also provides them with a food source. In return, they protect the leafhoppers from predators. Number 14. Remora fish and sharks. The Remora fish are easily identified by their dorsal fins, which form a modified, oval-shaped organ that can open and close to create suction. By doing so, the fish can firmly affix themselves to larger marine animals, like sharks or manta rays. Hence their nickname Suckerfish. As the Remora hitches a ride, it will eat any food scraps left from the host's meals and waste products. The behavior can also remove bacteria and parasites. While some sharks are hostile towards Remoras, most of them seem to tolerate the animals. They've even been known to jealously guard the smaller fish so other sharks can't benefit from their services. Remoras also have an odd relationship with humans. Fishermen will catch turtles by using the animal's suction ability. After tying a rope to it, the fish is thrown into the water where it attaches itself to the turtle's shell and is reeled back in. Number 13. Honey Badgers and Honey Guide Birds Both animals love honey, hence their names. But the bird is said to lead predators like the honey badger to the nests of honey bees. After the beast attacks and feeds off the colony, the scheming bird arrives to collect the spoils that remain. It's an arrangement that benefits all parties concerned. It should be mentioned that some sources have labelled the relationship between the honey badger and the honey guide bird as a myth. In any event, would the honey badger really care? Number 12. Honey guide birds and humans. Along with allegedly guiding honey badgers, the birds are also known to guide humans. In this documented relationship, they lead people to bee colonies. Local tribes in Africa are said to summon the birds by using a series of unique calls, including shouts and whistles. Once a honey guide is located, the bird will respond to the tribespeople with its own distinct calls that indicate the presence of a beehive. It's worth noting that the animals have never been domesticated or trained by people. After the nest is opened, the honey guide will swoop down and feast on the leftover wax and larvae. The symbiotic relationship is thought to have evolved almost 2 million years ago. Number 11. Grey Wolves and Striped Hyenas According to researchers, interspecies cooperative hunting is a rarity. But here's an example of such that has been documented in the Middle East. Striped hyenas have a solitary nature when it comes to hunting. And although wolves are known as social animals, that behaviour typically applies only to their own pack. It's unusual for them to accept outside species into their midst. So it was odd to find that the two had developed an alliance in the Negev Desert of Israel. It was discovered when a mix of wolf and hyena tracks were found there. The two species were later observed travelling as a unified pack, with the hyenas occupying the middle. It is unknown exactly why the animals formed such a partnership, but experts have a few theories. Food can be extremely scarce in such extreme environments, so that may have played a big factor. Wolves can contribute speed, agility and sharper hunting instincts than hyenas, and they can hunt better in packs. Hyenas have a heightened sense of smell and powerful jaws that can crack larger bones and rip open metal cans left in garbage. Given the scarcity of food in the desert, the two animals probably teamed up to ensure the survival of their respective species. Number 10. Cleaner Fish Not unlike humans hiring a cleaning service, certain fish provide cleaning services for other fish. There are so-called neutral zones, where species like wrasse and gobies will attend to larger clients. They can include sea turtles and whales. Those client fish adopt a distinct pose that signals they wish to be cleaned. It also signals they won't try to eat their cleaner. The smaller fish proceed to gorge on all the dead tissues, mucus and parasites that cover the surface and gills of their client. 
they receive a free meal while the client emerges sparkling clean. Experts say the behavior benefits the overall health of aquatic communities by reducing the number of harmful parasites. Number 9. Alligators and Wading Birds Experts say that alligators have an understanding with some species of wading birds that benefits both animals. To prevent their eggs from being stolen by mammals like possums, certain species of wading birds will build their nests above waters inhabited by alligators. The reptiles offer some protection for the birds, but the reptiles gain an advantage too. Predators entering their territory seeking the birds' nests instead become a prey for the gators. Scientists have found that egrets and herons are the two bird families that are most likely to build nests above alligators. Those gators with nests over them function as bodyguards for the birds and receive a lot of easy meals in return. As a result, those specimens tend to be in better physical health than their counterparts. That might cause territorial battles to erupt over who gets to guard the nesting bird colonies. Number 8. Rare Wolves and Monkeys Gallarda monkeys graze on the grasslands of Ethiopia, and their population is estimated at more than 200,000 individuals. By contrast, Ethiopian wolves number less than 500, making them one of the world's rarest canids. Some scientists think the wolves' survival may depend in part on a symbiotic relationship they share with the primates. Ethiopian wolves feed primarily on certain rodents that inhabit the same territory as Gallardas. Troops of the monkeys will allow them to hunt for those rodents within their midst. Even though juvenile monkeys would be easy prey, the wolves never attempt to kill them and there is rarely any conflict. However, the monkeys will flee if feral dogs approach. Researchers cite two reasons for the unusual arrangement. The grazing monkeys might help to flush out the hidden rodents, and the rodents might not detect the presence of wolves with so many larger animals around. Number 7. Oxpeckers and Large Mammals It has often been observed that birds seem to know what it takes to get along with their comrades in the animal kingdom. Oxpeckers are small birds known for perching atop big animals like zebras, hippos and rhinos. The birds provide cleaning services that remove small insects like ticks and parasites from the larger animal's skin. They even eat the dandruff and earwax. While the birds obtain a free meal, the mammal receives a thorough cleaning. It is usually defined as a mutualistic relationship, but oxpeckers will sometimes open new wounds on their host in order to drink their blood, and that suggests they might be parasites instead. Some animals, including elephants, will dislodge the birds when they land. Maybe that's the reason why. Number 6. Bees and Flowers Here's a mutualistic relationship that is widely known, but it's no less fascinating. Bees gather nectar as they fly from one flower to another. That turns the nectar into food, which benefits the insect. During their travels, they gather pollen on their hairy bodies that is distributed to the next flower they land upon. The bees are fed and the plants are pollinated, allowing them to reproduce. Number 5. Bees and Orchids Some species known as orchid bees specialize in that particular flower. Males collect perfume from the flowers and transform them into pheromones. In the process of collecting perfume, the orchid's pollen collects on the bee's back and is later distributed to other flowers. Scientists say the behavior is essential for orchid reproduction. The bees may use the perfume-based pheromones for marking territory or for attracting mates, but its exact purpose is still a mystery. Number 4. Sea anemones and hermit crabs One of the better-known examples of a symbiotic relationship in the animal kingdom involves these two species. Sea anemones will hitch rides on the backs of hermit crabs so they can easily travel across the ocean floor. But did you know that the crustaceans actually seek out these hitchhikers? Anemones have barbed tentacles that sting predators that get too close to the crabs. Their tentacles can also grab food that remains from the host's meals. In return, the crab warns off starfish and other animals that prey on anemones. Number 3. Boxing Crabs These crustaceans have a cooperative pact with other marine life that usually results in a win-win for all parties concerned. Their name comes from their behavior of holding sea anemones in their claws for self-defense. It kind of looks like they're wearing tiny boxing gloves or are holding little pom-poms. But the anemones can pack a toxic punch. 
those animals also benefit from the crab transporting them around, which increases their chances of gathering food. Number 2. Crocodiles and Plovers There's a reason why plovers are called crocodile birds. When one of the big reptiles emerges from the water, it will often stoop on the riverbank with its mouth wide open. That can be a terrifying sight, but these small wading birds take that as their cue to enter the beast's mouth. While it seems like a death wish, the croc stays still while the plover acts as kind of like a dentist. It carefully picks off bits of food that remain in the mouth of its patient. Cleaning the crocodile's mouth helps remove insects and raw meat that might become infected. In return, the tiny bird gets a free meal. It will even function as an alarm. If the plover senses danger while it's in the croc's mouth, it will make a warning call and fly away. Then the reptile knows it's time to return to the water and evade a potential threat. Number 1. Mosquitoes and Humans You're probably too familiar with this particular relationship. The insects feed off our blood to survive and to help care for their eggs. When they're busy sucking our blood, the insect's saliva is often passed directly into our bloodstream. That can transmit life-threatening diseases like malaria or yellow fever. The mosquito gains all the benefits and we get all the misery. That pretty much defines a parasitic relationship. And it proves that humans can pay a steep price for being such accommodating hosts. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button and click the bell for notifications for our next exciting episode right here on Epic Wildlife.